What? You own my scraps. What? Stop. All right. So for <laughs> what? I said he owns this class. He doesn't need to be interrupted by you. Still I'm being interrupted by you right now. So. <laughs> Stop, and we'll get through this because I want to get through this, and then we can do other stuff. Um, so, in, in so obviously, the higher power you have of a Bluetooth um, connection, the further you can send information. So, most things are probably for a decibel. What was it? Decibel milliwatts. Decibel milliwatts. Decibel milliwatts. So you get about thirty feet. Again, if you can't really go through walls. Um, Sometimes it can, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on what the wall is made out of, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in order to pair Bluetooth, you need an inquiry and paging procedure. One is what do you guys think that is, or if you guys want to read off the table, off the screen, or yes. So what's the difference between? So obviously the the uh, satellite signal can go through walls, but it doesn't seem to be anything different from Wi-Fi signal because they're all wireless. So. I don't know the um, what frequency they use for oh, different, frequencies. different frequencies. I know that the Weather Channel, like the the National Weather, whatever, uses um, five gigahertz. Certain channels in the five gigahertz range where you you're not allowed to use because it'll interfere with them. But part of that is you have stuff. You have very little interference between satellites and. Uh, receivers on the ground so you have um, like a cell tower with an antenna pointed up yeah. that talks to the satellites and then your phone talks to the cell tower your phone never talks directly to a satellite but the cell tower is still wireless yeah so how does that work why, why can Wi-Fi go I mean Wi-Fi can Bluetooth, Bluetooth. because it's all about power oh. oh it's all about how much power it takes I don't know what decibel milliamps versus you know watts but 12 volts so it just depends on power consumption okay. that's why you can have bluetooth on all the time because it's very low power i can't be walking around doing a hot spot because that takes way more power than bluetooth oh, oh yeah you run a battery yeah that's because you're you're using a lot more power to broadcast it. to broadcast it to okay. put that, that out there Bluetooth is way lower, and unless you're not you're not actively sending something, it's not really doing much. Um, that's what the inquiry inquiry procedure does. It's used by Bluetooth to discover other Bluetooth devices. So when you turn Bluetooth on, you kind of send an inquiry procedure out there. It starts just, "Hey, I'm here. You can connect to me." And then paging procedure is when you go, "Okay, I want to actively connect to this," and then it synchronizes up, and then you can send information. Um, yeah, like music, which is almost exclusively what I use Bluetooth for. What else would you use? Uh, to send pictures. So like if the internet goes down or you're out of whatever, my brother sent a picture, I think my nephew, um, via Bluetooth. Or ver via AirDrop, which Air I think Drop, is Bluetooth, yeah. with it, which I'm pretty sure is Bluetooth. Um, it's just it's Apple's fancy way of making it. Oh, okay. um, so yes. inquiry, inquiry is looking for other Bluetooth. Yes. Paging is connecting. For exactly. And then PicoNet, um, now this, I've actually, PicoNet is in the network device, or the network networking plus certification, so you do want to know what that is. That's an ad hoc network of Bluetooth devices. Ad hoc is basically everything's connected to, it's something, so there's not a central thing everything's connected to. It's kind of like a mesh network, but um, there's no central switch or no central hub or no central router, it's, it's just my phone. No, it's like my phone's connected to your phone, which is connected to his phone, which is connected to my phone. Okay. That's an ad hoc network, and or that's a PicoNet because we're all going via Bluetooth, but an ad hoc network is just a network with everything connected to each other with no central so switch. So it's a uh, No, I think it's only wireless. Ad hoc network oh, is only okay. wireless but, stuff. Okay. Like in you know, an iPhone context, how how do you connect like that? You connect to the next person, I connect to you. Do we? Do what, what kind of? Behavior? I don't know if you can do it with iPhones. I know you can do it with surfaces, but yeah, I can connect. So if I connect to your phone using AirDrop or Bluetooth, that's an ad hoc network. Oh, it's just two already connected. It's two things put together real quick. Okay. No centralized thingy. I'm being real technical with my terms here. 
Um, and then it's done. It's real temporary. Real, what? really temporary. Why is it eight limits? Hmm? Why is it limited to eight devices? Um, because that's just other than that, it's probably just too much. You gotta have a limit, otherwise you start losing. You get really bad performance. Um, you guys, none of you guys use. Well, you use Apple, but I'm sure you know how to turn your Bluetooth on. Um, pairing, obviously, it's when you're connecting. Passkey, have you guys ever had to use it? What? That doesn't make sense. Pairing and there's uh, synchronize something. Uh, no, no, go up. Go up. Uh, pairing. No, so in order to connect, you have to establish establish a synchronization. It's like a conversation. If you start and then I start and we don't synchronize what we're talking about, I'm just talking and you're just talking and I'm not listening and you're not listening. Whereas if we go, hey, I need to talk to you. Oh, okay, let's talk. Boom. That was the paging procedure. And once we're talking, we are paired. Right, so when a Bluetooth device is set up to connect to another Bluetooth device, so you have to set up pairing. You basically have to prep it for this. Uh, passkey, have you guys ever had to use a passkey? Yeah. For yeah. Car, when you connect to a car. For, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, see, I don't have a fancy car. I have just a Bluetooth speaker sitting on my seat, and that's my. That's how I listen to Spotify. Oh, Bluetooth speaker? Yeah, just sitting there. <laughs> and then it's like, I'll just be listening to music. And it's like, battery's at 10%. I'm like, oh, plug it in. It actually be battery. You buy a Bose. Um, you guys know how to do that. All right, so YMAX is basically, um, if I remember, uh, signaling an online of site. Interoperability for microwave access. There's no X. X. Wema. Seth Wema. Why is there an X? Access. X. Access. ACC no. sounds like an X. ACC sounds like X. Ack. What are you doing? Ack. Ax. S. No. Oh my, I am not getting into this conversation with you guys. I didn't come up with the acronym. Oh, yeah, you're right. Access. So, X. Yes. yes. But you don't, you don't say it like that. You say access. The, access. The, the stress access. is on the first uh, A. Access. Yeah. Access. I know what it is. Access. 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 Not access. access. All right, that's access. 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 Yeah, I said, I said it wrong. Access. Yes, why was access? Why was access? There you go. Access. All right, moving access. on. Max. 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 Access. The main <laughs> Potato tomato. That's not potato tomato. How do you say it? Excess and excess are different things. Excess. Not excess some bird. is extra stuff. Excess. Oh, oh. <laughs> excess. 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 Wait, I don't, I got it. Access, extra stuff. E X C E S S. Yeah, extra stuff. Access is A C C E S S. Okay, what's access. extra stuff? Access. It's like extra. What's, what's this one? Access. 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 There you go. Oh, access. Access. Oh, <laughs> so hard dog, being American. I sympathize with you all. <laughs> so hard to speak English your whole life. <laughs> Oh, you know Spanish. Good for you. Look at these guys. Are you done? Because <laughs> all of that's recorded. <laughs> it's mainly just my reaction, and you can probably hear you a little bit. But anyway, YMAX. So when you have places, it, so YMAX is more or less longer range Wi-Fi. Right, it's different from Wi-Fi because it's used for, um, and we find out the last mile. So the last mile is basically the last part of the connection from the telecommunications provider to the customer. More or less, it's from your house to the telephone poles, or your house to the telephone pole to Comcast's headquarters right there. So it's not that big of a, of a distance, but WiMAX can be used for um, longer distance. So if my house, I'm gonna just draw on here. So if this is my house, this. So, is a Wi-Fi on the airport Wi-Fi? No, it's Wi-Fi. 
<laughs> my house. Boom to the telephone pole. And this is Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> so this here is the last mile what WiMAX will do is instead of having a physical wire it will be wireless and so that helps with if you don't want to set up all the information all the infrastructure for let's say you're in the mountains change the color it's all mountainy. Um, you can do that, and it's a lot cheaper. Wait, However, so is it more secure? No. No way. Not Nothing weird. wireless oh, is oh, oh, oh. wired is always more secure okay. than wireless. Okay. One hundred percent of the time. Well, so that is WiMAX, right? Yes. So WiMAX is yes. That was WiMAX. Okay. You guys all know RFID, right? Yeah. Radio frequency identification. You put the thing in your hand. You can like do the. You can inject them with your finger now. Yeah, so you can, oh, okay, yeah, I didn't, I forgot about that. So you can actually put an RFID scanner, so the clink, makes that exact noise too. Um, and then when you're like unconscious, they can scan it and they can know all about you. Um, you can put it, you can put an RFID in a dog so that if it's ever found, if it runs away, the vet can scan it and, oh, this is Jared Casper's dog. It lives here, here, here. All right, I'm going to give him a call. But RFID can be easily hacked. There's this epi there was an episode of Mythbusters in which they wanted to see how easy it was to steal credit card information from um, credit cards. And so they built this RFID scanner and all they had to do, right? They just went, with, this is the RFID scanner, they would just go and they would have it. it would, they wouldn't have to touch the person if they, you know, whatever, they would just run it by them within you know, six inches of the thing through purses, through coats, and they could get the information. Um, and so MasterCard and Visa had... We should watch it. Um, maybe. So MasterCard and Visa threatened to pull their advertisements on Discovery Channel if they showed that, if they showed that episode, so they never ended up showing it. Well, what is it on YouTube? I don't think so. I think there's Adam Savage talking about it. I don't think they actually. What Adam Savage? Adam Savage. No. Wait. So, so did they uh, did they start to produce any uh, pre procedures to prevent it? So that's that what the new chip. So this was maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. That's what the chip is now in there for. The chip oh, helps with that. Okay. Helps with it being more secure. And why do why when you are buying stuff they always say if you have a chip, please use a chip instead of swiping. Uh, so some of them, if they've paid to have that extra security, you can, I think it's, you pay for it. You, you do it with the chip, but if you don't, you just swipe it. Okay. And, um, what it does. So have you guys ever done Apple pay? No, I don't want to, I don't, want, I don't want to use I'm actually, I think it's more secure than your card. What? Right. So part of how it works is called near fear, near field communication. I mean, it only will work if you're within four centimeters, which is 1.6 inches of each other. So you literally have to be that close with nothing in between it for it to work. So when you're paying with your phone, what it does is it creates a randomly generated, I'm not 100% sure how it works, but um, it creates a randomly generated, you know, 32 digit number that only your bank knows and your phone knows, or I can't remember, but it creates a randomly unique key every single time um, so even if you get the phone I, I don't know but wirelessly it's more secure than using credit cards because if with credit cards that doesn't change and I think this is how it works so if I get your credit card number I have access to everything whereas if I get the the 32 digit randomly generated key I can only mess with that one transaction I can't that won't be used again so I think that's how it works so wirelessly well, that's all you need. Oh, right, but nah, they always but take all the money out. That's like no, so so using the credit card, it's a credit card number, right? Your credit card number is tied to your bank account. Well, they can charge oh, they so they can them. charge an unlimited number of times. You don't get the Whereas if they get the pass key, the pass key 
So it's ve- it so it's bank. vendor. Yeah, I know, but like say, so like if you're smart and you have a credit card, right? You're not gonna keep swiping. You're gonna get one big purchase or something. You're gonna get denied. And they call. And like, oh, what are you? Hi, but if you have the bad? pad, but if you have the thirty-two thing, it's gonna be the same. You're gonna have one big transaction. No. Oh, uh, yeah. No. So. And see, you know, Mastercard. Mastercard. You so know, this Apple is Pay to big transaction. Uh, oh, McDonald's or whatever, yeah. and this is yeah. to McDonald's. Big so, they have it. so with Find this, your card? your credit card number, gentlemen. Sh- so your credit card number. If I have that, I have direct access to your card, one hundred percent of the time, until you change your credit card to cancel that account. Right. With this, what it does is it creates. That's my third, that's my random key that then gets sent to McDonald's and then that gets okayed. If I get this number, it's own. It, it will. So what will happen is it will say that number's already been used for a transaction. You no longer have access to the phone. So it, it basically generates a one-time rand, one-time, one-use key that says, "Okay, that transaction is good," and then it gets rid of it and never uses that one again. So even if I have access to this number, I no longer have at direct access to your bank account. Whereas if I have your credit card number. I have direct access to your bank account or your credit card. Does that make sense? Makes sense. I mean, so it's kind of like saying. Uh, well, because the next time so, you're buying something, the number is regenerated, right? So yeah, it's so it's like <coughs> it's like your Facebook account, right? Your Facebook uses your real name, so if I get your real name, I get direct access to your Facebook. If you create a Facebook, and every time you log into Facebook, it randomly generates a new name for you. But on your end, it doesn't change. You still get to go to Jared's Facebook. You can go to Sam, and to you, it's now no different. But when he tries, when Jared tries to look at your account, he can only um, it only works for that. So it'll create, you know. You really missed out on that one. <laughs> what I'm so you? confused. <laughs> I it's okay. That, but then you're well, so you understand we this, okay? Yeah, then don't listen to what I'm saying about <laughs> Facebook. It's okay. We understood. We understood. But I'm, I just want to make sure. You, do you get it? Oh, I get like a oh. lot. But like I'm just saying, you saying one big transaction, one big money transaction is still stolen. The same thing. But it's it's okay. right. But they don't. This number doesn't exist until you tell it to create one. Yeah, this, your Mastercard credit card number always exists. Okay. So if you have a credit card, if you you have a stolen credit card, are you going to use it more than once? No. You're going to have one big transaction that you get. But that or you do a lot of small transactions that they'll never notice, and you never have to pay for gas ever again. Throwing that out there, but so if I if I get your credit card right, I have direct access to your bank account, and I swipe it, right? If, I, if you get my phone, you still need either a pin or my thumbprint to buy anything. So right then and there, it's more secure. And once you get Apple Pay up, yes, you can make your one transaction. But getting two Apple Pay is what's hard because you have to type in a pin or your. Th- uh, thumbprint. Whereas if I steal your wallet, I'd have to chop off your thumb in order to do that. If I steal your wallet, I have direct access. I have your credit card, right? Whereas if I steal your phone, I'd have to chop off your finger in order to get access to Apple Pay. That's why it's a little more secure. And from a so if you're stealing, if you're coming in from Target, right? Instead of going through, who did the HVAC system for the breach? Was that you? Did you do Target? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. So what? What he would see, instead of a list of credit card numbers, he'll see a list of transaction numbers that are randomly generated by Apple Pay that are already been used and can't be used again. It's basically a record, not a direct tie. That's how I understand it, how it works. I may be wrong, but to me that makes sense and it goes with what I know of Apple Pay networking credit cards. Are we good? Okay. That was a... <clears throat> <coughs> Little bit of <laughs> okay. What are you doing, Edward? Okay, I'm in a dilemma. He's in a dilemma. Should I pause the recording? No, 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 no. Because I do have class I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> What's your dilemma, though? That's not good. Sorry for, we'll talk after school. Sorry for so, facing your interest. So RFID. 
Chinese water helps, in case you don't know. Hmm? Chinese water helps. I am drinking with tea. So, RFID, you guys know basically what that is, right? You guys know how it works at all? No. All right, so there's a couple different ways. Uh, uh, principle of modulated backscatter. Backscatter is referring to the reflection of radio waves striking the RFID tag and reflecting back to the transmitter source, which is stored with its unique stored information system. So basically, I have an RFID tag and I'm an RFID scanner. On my tag, I have I allow it gets scanned and then it reflects certain information back. And the way the RFID tag is designed, it will only allow certain information back. That information gets read and de not decrypted, but it gets interpreted into information. So kind of like kind of like Braille, you know how you feel it, and you feel you know. Three dots is an S, three dashes is an O, and three dots is an S, so it's like SOS. You're basically putting, you're sending, inf you're sending information out, you're sending a signal, right? You're feeling it, and you're getting certain information back that then gets interpreted as something else. Wait, so, so it's like what they put in some cards. Like you swipe it to eat dinner. Cards, yeah. Oh, okay. RFID. RFID, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is just the history of it. That you guys will read that um, for the homework. Like, so when you put this on the office, that yeah. So you and yeah. The, so people have to have a thing to swipe it to not, tag it, not swipe it to, to, to put it on top there to show the information. You have a scanner, so a little gun-looking thing. You go beep. Stop that. Boom. No, not an actual gun. Okay, just kidding. Like an RFID scanner. Okay, so the the person has to have it. It's so what? To have a tag with a name on. Which so means, if if you have a tag in you, they scan it. It sends out information. Oh, yeah. Only no. certain information yeah. comes back because okay. of the way it's been designed. That's and then it gets interpreted. So you can have three different types. You can power the tag passively, which is what's typically inside of a dog. It doesn't require a battery. It doesn't require anything. It's just kind of there. Uh, you have semi-active, which uses um, a battery. And then active um, uses battery and is stronger. So depending on how far you want to read it, depending on what it's being used for, you're either going to use passive, semi-active, or active. Um, where does it tell you options? Um, so typically, in the I think in the back up here. No, you have to pay for it. It's like a couple hundred bucks. I think. <laughs> Some people love their dog. Yeah, my dog is that one. Mine didn't. And then my grandma let her out and she was gone for six dog. hours. What? That can worth more than a dog. They're not, like, cost, they're not like a couple hundred. They're probably like... I have no idea how much they are. But no, there there are people online who go, I will give you $100,000 cash if I take your dog right now. And they go, no. Wow. So to some people, a dog is worth more. Like if you can't have kids, like I know a couple who couldn't have kids for years. So they had a dog and the dog was their child. That's not a total uh, substitute. I know it's not, but no. if you don't, maybe they couldn't afford it. I don't know. I'm just saying. Some people, two, do, two people, so two certain people, dogs are, you know, some people would choose a dog to live than a human. So, and it's crazy. Um, so then you have different frequency um, RFIDs. Again, these are just used for different things, depending on if you're working with liquids, if you're working with solids, if you're working through animals or whatever. Like you just use different ones for different things. Um, securing that? wireless lands. Uh, like I said, so I'm only going to I'm going to go through this quickly, um, and then I want I'm going to assign questions. I think there's only 20 of them, and they're pretty easy at the end of the book. Um, and then Thursday we'll have an activity, and Friday we'll have a quiz on chapters 10 and 11. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What? Have a quiz? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> ten and eleven, chapters ten and eleven. On Friday. On Friday. Oh my God. <laughs> um. So beacon. So what you can do. So in order for an SSID to be located by your phone or or or, or, or your computer. It has to send out beacon. There's things called beacon packets and that you can be that. Um, you can sniff, sniff and you can sniff. find out, even if the SSID is not broadcasting, you can find the SSID. What is SSID? 
Well, that's like SSID is the Wi-Fi name service set identification. That's just like if you click oh. other. Um, yeah, but they can find out the name. I know, don't know actually. I've never tried it. I've always been connected to a Wi-Fi network. When I've packet sniffed, I've never done it without being connected. So I don't know how that works. Yo, we should try. It. Like, maybe that'll be the activity on Thursday. Like, hide your SSID. Could see if you can find it. Once? I don't think you did. You had to hide it from me, yeah. and then you told it to me, and I had and I typed it in, and it worked. Yeah. Um, and then securing this is radius. Radius is actually a really cool way of um, securing a network. It's basically you sign into a server, and the server then dictates whether or not you can then connect to the network. So it has, um, and I think we'll we'll watch a video on radius and. All these because I think there's a really good one out there and explains what it. Diameter? What? Diameter? diameter? They haven't come out with diameter yet. Um, it's uh. Are you serious? No, I'm trying to think of a pun that has to deal with pi. <laughs> They're too busy dealing with pi, I guess. I don't know. Um, and this one configuring point to multi point wireless LAN. This is basically an extension of WiMAX. So you see this home network here. You send an information to an antenna up here, and then the antenna will can beam it down to a house down. Well, that's not WiMAX. That's it's similar to WiMAX. That's my old Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Do you no, even know what no. You said at all? So that's just the way. There are different types of antennas, and these are also in the Network Plus exam. So you do want to know the difference between Omni, Yagi, and Dish. Uh, it's um um um. Jack's Antennas, as well as the, I don't even, I don't even know what you said, but don't talk the rest of the class. Um, these are distances out depending on what speed you want. So if you want two megabits per second, you can go, you can go, thirty-eight kilometers with the dish, dish, or if you want eleven megabits per second, you can go eighteen kilometers. Um, so the questions, I'll put these on line. But there's six for questions, 11.2, none for 11.3, 10 for 11.4, and four for 11.5. Um, and like I said, I'll put those online. Those will be due Friday before the um, before class. So I'll make them do like 1.30, 2 o'clock or whatever. I want them done before the quiz because doing this will help you for the quiz. May or may not be questions from the homework directly on the quiz. Um, One last question. Yes. How's your Thanksgiving? It was really good. What did you do? Um, I'll answer the rest of that later. So, I'm going to stop the video real quick.